All right. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Nick Talks here in a different location that is not my living room. It's my bedroom. And because I'm recording, it's almost a guarantee that my dog will start playing with his toys <laughs> as loudly as possible. I don't know why he does that, but he does. Um, today, I want to talk about fashion and the impact that that has had on me that I never really anticipated it having because I, um, I kind of, I grew up as a tomboy and I kind of grew up with this thought that I don't really care very much about what I wear. I don't really care about fashion. I don't care about being cute. I don't care about makeup. I don't care about blah, 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 blah. And honestly, um, harbored a bunch of quite a bit of like toxic masculinity towards anything that was feminine because I was raised by a toxic man. And so that's very, very, um, it's very, very unfortunate for me. Hate that for me. But, but as I grew up and started to have my own experiences, life experiences and stuff, I realized just how important fashion is to like how you present yourself and especially because I was in the military as many people know I am a veteran and in case you don't know when you're in the military you don't really get to choose what you wear on a day-to-day basis you wear one fucking thing you wear your uniform Um, it's usually the, the camouflage, like the green, whatever with the boots, you do your hair one way, which is slicked back. And if you're a black woman or just anyone with like textured or curly hair, it's very, very hard because, you know, you have to have it slicked back to have the appearance of being straight. Like that's literally what's been in the regulations for years. And so a lot of us that have curly hair, when we get out, we have a lot of damage, like a lot of damage to our hair. Because when I got out and I moved to New York and I started trying to wear my hair out, it was damaged. Um, I, I couldn't, I, like the, the curls just wouldn't curl. It wouldn't do, it wouldn't do the shit that it was supposed to. I was very, very frustrated and ultimately had to cut off like several inches of my hair because it was just all, it, it was just all damaged from having to slick it back in a bun for almost a fucking decade. Um... And I have a little pseudo bald spot right here on <laughs> on the left side of my temple because of pulling it back so much. Thank God you can't really see it. But we're not going to draw a lot of attention to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I got out of the military and for the first time um, kind of had to pick out what to wear out in the world and I realized that I don't really know how to do that and it can be you know fashion and what you wear can be something that you kind of like you know you kind of underlook or like just underestimate until it really time comes time where you have like this you know a, a situation like a um um, an event or something big in your life to go to and you realize you have to pick out what to wear and you have no idea what to do. Um, like not everybody is a professional stylist and like that shouldn't be expected. But in my case, I kind of realized that I don't know what my personal style is. And it kind of reflected how I felt or like kind of the changes I was going through at the time because um, you know, going through some mental health stuff in the last few years, I have also come to the realization, um, talking to a few psychiatrists and psychologists and healers and therapists that I, for a, most of my life have had no idea who I am, no concept of self-worth, which was crazy because I'm a very confident person. Um, but it was brought to my attention that, being, you know, being a, a gifted and talented child who was like an over overachiever, high performer, um, basically all of the love that I received, um, both in my youth and some in my adulthood, was contingent on what I could provide or how I could perform. 
And so I've just been basically spending all my time trying to get all this external validation and I have no idea who I am outside of what I can provide for other people. Even the job that I do, I'm an actor, I am a producer, I'm a content creator, I interact with people thousands millions of people every single day either through like live streaming or podcasting or you know doing my skits and stuff and I do a lot of work for big companies now I do work for Marvel Studios and Disney and Sony and you know all my what I do is contingent on what people think of me and which is you know which is fine I love what I do but I realized that for most of my life I just really didn't I haven't known who I am and that reflected in the way that I dressed and that I didn't really know how to dress myself. I knew I wanted to look cute. I knew I wanted to look pretty. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really know. And it really got me thinking about like how much what we wear can be such an important tool to like, presenting ourselves into the world not only like how people see us but like how how we see ourselves um makeup has has been a big part of it too especially because just as I was learning to wear makeup um I had um I was just as I was learning how to really you know do makeup and put on makeup I um went through some very traumatic stuff in the air force and one of the things that my abuser would try and take from me was makeup. She would tell me that I'm too happy, that I'm too bubbly. Um, she, um, she basically, she would write me up, write me almost career ending paperwork for wearing makeup, which is not something that's against the rules in the Air Force, but also in the military, commanders can do literally whatever the fuck they want to you and somebody has to go through a lot of paperwork and effort to check them. <laughs> so, um, so makeup was a tool that I couldn't use for a very long time. And so I got out of the Air Force and finally I have all of this freedom, all of this choice to be able to, you know, go where I want, work where I want. I can quit whenever I want. I can wear whatever I want. I can put makeup on. I can change my hair. I can cut my hair. I can color my hair. I don't have to wear it in a bun off of my collar. And so it, it really got me down this train of thought of wondering, like, what is my style? Who the fuck, who am I? And over the past three years, I'm really, I, I'm very happy now that I feel like I've developed my own personal sense of style. And I feel like it's really important for, 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 for people to be able to develop their own sense of style because it not only, like, it's not only how you present yourself to the world, but it's also, it also reflects, like, how you feel about yourself, like, how you feel when you look in the mirror. Like, when you, when you look good, you feel good, truly, truly. It might feel really, sound, like, really materialistic and stuff, and I know there's a lot of criticism on, like, you know, luxury um content and stuff like that on how it's like just so materialistic and blah 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 blah. and there's definitely something to that but what is the purpose of things honestly in this world if not for us to fucking enjoy it and um I'm sorry but sometimes material things can fix a lot on the inside they can't fix everything but I think material things aesthetic you know art it can fix so much on the inside and I have got to say that me knowing who I am through like what I like to wear what I feel makes me look my best what makes me feel my best that has been such a big part of me finding my identity and finding out who the fuck I am you know um I feel like I've developed this, I'll, de I'll, I'll describe my sense of style, I feel like I've developed, <laughs> I've definitely developed a penchant for graphic tees, um, I have such a wide collection, mostly Marvel, um, and then next is anime, and then literally everything else, but, um, 
but I but I but I love I love graphic t-shirts. They reflect what I think about most, which is nerd shit and movies and stuff. Um there and when I get t-shirts of like some of my favorite characters, like I have a Shang-Chi t-shirt on right now, it makes me feel it makes me feel powerful. It it, it, it at least a little part of me it calls back memories of like why I love these characters and so on and so forth. And even just that little that little second that I think about that, I feel has a really big impact on my self-esteem especially because I am very clinically depressed and anxious and literally any little thing can help or hurt me um I started cutting the collars off of my shirt because I realized like number one I like the off shoulder look I like show I don't know I didn't know I like my shoulders I like showing off my shoulders I'm a pretty athletic person and I think I have pretty nice shoulders and also I have this little tattoo of a quote from Avengers Endgame and I like to be able to show that off so yeah fuck it like I wear very um, loose jeans and and think that that's part of the 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 collar thing too because um, when I wear collars I feel very restricted I don't know if that's something that has been there my whole life. Maybe it has, but it definitely like started to show up when I got out of the military and could, didn't have to wear those like tight collared things all the time. I just felt so choked and restrained. Probably very reflective of how I just felt when I was in the military, just how I felt for a lot of my life. And so I just, I've just started, you know, cutting the collars off of my shirt because I just, I don't like to feel restricted. I don't like it. I wear very baggy jeans for the very same reason. I think I've worn skinny jeans in the past, like in high school, because it was the fashionable thing to do because skinny jeans were in. But if I'm being really honest, I don't think I've ever fucking liked skinny (laughs) jeans. I've never really, really liked them. Like they're just, you know, they're, they're just, they feel restrictive. They're just like very fucking airtight and just squishes all of your shit. And like for me, I don't like that. I don't like that. So now I wear baggy jeans with rips in them. So like, yeah, very much tomboyish, very much honestly reverting back to the skater girl um, aesthetic that I used to have or really wanted to have when I was 13. But we didn't have like my family just did not have money to buy new clothes of any sort and so I really had only a few staples and when I did I loved jeans and I love shirts and I love sneakers I have a bunch of sneakers now like I've really honestly I've it's kind of a it's kind of been a reparent reparenting thing too because even at 30 I'm getting to you know delve into that kind of youthful style that I didn't get to fully express when I was younger because we were going through the trauma of poverty and I was going through the trauma of abuse I didn't have time to think about these things you know and so I think it's really cool that I get to um that I get to that I get to express myself in in that way um I (laughs) I got a bunch of piercings in the last fucking year year (laughs) literally a year my nose my ears my you know because that's something that's kind of like something that I I couldn't you know you can't do in the military you can have multiple piercings and I also grew up in a very conservative Christian environment and so jewelry itself was very frowned upon and so now I wear a whole bunch of jewelry maybe it's part of maybe it's kind of a rebellion thing but it's also because I like jewelry it's something that I used to look at so much when I was younger and I was like gosh I wish I could do that I wish I could pull that off wish I could wear that and now I'm 30 and I can you know, now I'm 30 and I can. I have my curly hair out. You know, I got to experiment with a whole bunch of ways to wear my hair. Not just the messy bun. I love my little pineapple that makes it look like, you know, it makes my hair kind of look like a, like a, like it's shaved on the side, kind of like a faux hawk or, or something like a fade of some sorts, like makes it look a little edgy, but in a way that I can keep my long hair. I fucking, I love that. I love that. And when I go to... Um, events and red carpets and stuff. I take great joy in, you know, finding something very interesting to wear um, because you can't do a lot, like, there's a lot that you can't, um, you can't control about the industry and how people in the industry see you and how people treat you. Um, But one thing that you can control is what you wear and I love picking out things that, that, that say like, look at me, I'm interesting, 
you want to talk to me? Like, <laughs> I love doing that. It's so fun. And I love looking in the mirror after I'm done and knowing, like, uh, I'm I'm probably going to be the best dressed person in the room. That that brings me so much, so much pride and so much self-esteem and so much confidence. Um, and then I also have this other side of my style where I like gravitating towards, like, you know, crop tops. I like to show my stomach. Again, I'm a pretty athletic person, and I, I like, I like to show my stomach. I just do. <laughs> I think I have a. I think it's cute, and um, I have another, you know, and you know, I gravitate towards, you know, like classics and basics, like little black dresses and 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 stuff like that, and um, you know, and again, I'm a big sneaker head, so I incorporate that into my into my wardrobe. I even incorporate that into wearing dresses, just like. All I'm saying is like all these little elements that I have found out that they reflect me, like all these little things that like when you you see this, I'm like, this is this is a very Nikki thing. You see a graphic T-shirt of a Marvel, like a Marvel or an anime graphic T-shirt. I'm like, oh, that that's very Nikki. If somebody a lot of people that know me, if they see a pair of red Converse, they know I'm like, oh, my God, that is so Nikki. And these are things these are pieces that when I wear them. And I put it. I put an entire, you know, wardrobe together. Um, I feel good. I feel good. So I just think that it's really important. I think it's an important adult skill to really figure out your sense of style. Kind of going with fashion rules, but sometimes not. Like for instance, I don't care when I wear white. Like I wear white whenever the fuck I want. I don't. I don't follow that rule. Um, but I really do think it's like, it's kind of like an under, underrated adult, um, skill to be able to find your style of dress. It doesn't mean spending a lot of money. You can figure it out and fund a wardrobe very cheaply. Um, that's one thing that my mom taught me how to do. Um, but it's really important because it's not only how you present yourself to the world, but it's also, um... It also helps you see yourself in the best light possible. It can do a lot. It does a lot for your self-esteem. And I think it's something that shouldn't be overlooked. Like I said, this is not something that I think anyone would peg me for talking about. But it's something I've been thinking about a lot. And we're going to go I'm gonna go to the chat for questions. on Because we're, we're live streaming on TikTok right now. So if you have questions, throw them in the chat. And if not... Um, I'll close it out soon. Um, but yeah, it's something very underrated and um, know, it's definitely uh, it's definitely something I will try to not um, forget to, to teach my kids when I have them. Um, so I guess while we're waiting for questions, um, <laughs> what do I do here? I'll probably <laughs> um, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, Make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and um, and then of course my other social media, um, which is all at Nikki Marina, which is N I C Q U E M A R I N A, Instagram, Twitter, which I'm not very on very often, but still go, and then TikTok, which is like my main place to be, or whatnot. And uh, for any other information, you can go to nikkimarina.com. And uh, if you need to contact me or my representatives there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Would you say Kibby figure test helps in choosing the wardrobe? What is that? <laughs> what? What is that? And we're taking questions about the topic, not about whatever fuck we want. Because I'm taping it. I'm taping it. A podcast right now what is kibby figure test i will say that figuring out what your body type is definitely helps in picking out um in, in picking out what your your personal style is like pinterest has definitely been a big tool for me literally since high school um and, um, and one of the things is definitely like trying to figure out like what kind of body that you have, um, that can definitely help because everybody's body is fucking beautiful, but sometimes people just, 
like sometimes we kind of just wear the wrong things that no matter what you know size you are it will just not make you look good you know what I mean so yeah figuring out what your your body type is is definitely very um useful do you thrift your clothes sometimes I used to thrift a lot um when I was doing a lot of theater um because sometimes we would have to put our own costumes together and sometimes you can't just like some costumes you can't just order online or maybe you can order online but it would be cheaper um to just go and and put it together maybe not easier but sometimes it's a little fun um sometimes a little more fun to to put it together by yourself so sometimes I thrift but for the most part I try my best to just not buy a lot of stuff. I try to stick to basics, you know, both classic and I decide like for me, what are my basics? Like my basics are my jeans and my sneakers, you know, Um, and if I'm collecting really anything, it's it's graphic tees. And so I try not to buy a lot of clothes in bulk because number one, it's bad for the environment. Number two, you, you kind of want to be gentle on your own wallet. And then number three, like, you just, just don't want to be, just don't want to be wasteful. You know, it's just like, eh. how do you choose clothes for trips? Oh my God, that's such a good question. So I start, again, I start with my fundamentals. First of all, um, the way my life turns out, like, I know that there's always a, a possibility that I'll have to be called away to, like, a, like a, an event or something, maybe a red carpet, so I always take a formal dress with me, you know, um, and, uh, and even if I'm not, I always take, like, a little black dress, because no matter for, for, for whoever, like, no matter who you are, like, if, if you are a, a femme person, a little black dress usually is going to, is going to be very, very, um, very, very useful. And, um, and sometimes I'll take a pantsuit. Um, why is my, why is my TV going off right now? This is so annoying. Let me, let me shut the door. Of course, this is going to go into my, ah, it's going to go into my podcast because I am too lazy to change anything. Ah. Oof. Ugh, I think my dog turned on my TV. Crazy. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I'll pick I'll pick the basics, like um, little black dress, jeans, um, shoes, and then I'll try and just like add little pieces on to create different outfits, but with the the smallest amount of clothing ever you know what I mean like I can have like a black cami top or something and if I added a skirt to that that could be like a going out outfit or if I just I could or I could just add jeans to that or I can just add slacks and a blazer to that and now it's a suit you know if if I'm going to something that requires a suit I just try to I try to build off of like my basics and then try to add kind of um accessories and stuff to be able to like transform it into something else basically um if I need to that mean that way I can like pack as compactly as possible same goes for shoes as well I will try to pack only one pair of heels and that pair of heels will be used for everything so it should be a pretty neutral color or at least metallic so I have like one pair of gold heels that are like pretty great for it for everything so those are my going out heels those are my red carpet heels those are the heels that I can add jeans to in a in a cute top and now we're going to dinner heels or you know so so yeah and then also like make sure that you have shit that's there for comfort because you want to be as comfortable as possible um have you ever struggled with insecurities while figuring out how you who you are fashion wise yes I was even telling my husband the other day like yeah, I am a tomboy, but because I grew up in this toxic masculinity thing, I also have still, I still have this, um, this habit of suppressing any urges to do feminine things. So I am a tomboy, but I, but I have to sometimes remember to not like 
limit myself to that. Like I'm a tomboy and that's it. So I only wear jeans and I only wear sneakers because sometimes guys, sometimes I like wearing the little puffy silky dresses. Like I like those. Sometimes I like, I, I really do like wearing dresses. I like looking, I like being feminine. Um, I like tapping into like the princess vibe. I do. However, that toxic masculinity shit that I was raised in, sometimes when I'm trying to reach for a dress in my wardrobe because I'm like, I feel, I feel like being like a princess today, something in me, and it's probably my fucking dad's voice being like, we don't do that. That's not us. That's not us. We wear jeans and sneakers and this is not cool. For Nikki, not cool. And, and I kind of have to... I have to be like, no, because if I feel like wearing it and it's really calling to me that much, then this is my style too, you know? The, and and it, that's completely fine. It doesn't like fuck up my the entire integrity of my style because, you know, one day I want to wear jeans and be a little skater girl, but the next day I want to be a fucking princess. That doesn't That doesn't mean I don't know who I am. Maybe it means I know exactly who I am. Maybe it means that... As much as I've been living in my masculine for so long, maybe I want to embrace my feminine side now too. You know what I mean? So, um, so that, that's an insecurity that I deal with pretty often. And then of course, you know, if you're a femme presenting person, um, society has dictated that we're more than likely going to have body image issues because our weight fluctuates. Like my weight is a little kind of like not where I want it to be at this moment. Uh, even though I know that most people can't tell the fucking difference, I can, you know, and, um, and so sometimes I, um, and sometimes I can, uh, kind of, uh, it dissuade myself, dissuade myself from wearing certain things not even things that are particularly revealing, but because I have a few extra pounds on me right now than what I would like, you know, that can play a part in choosing what I wear or not. And like, you know, there's definitely, you know, you know, there's definitely things that are more flattering on you when your body is one way or the other. Um, but, um, but honestly, for that reason, I also, you know, have built into, I, I, I have that built into my style as well. The fact that I kind of suffer from body image issues and, um, and at some point probably have suffered from an eating disorder as I'm looking back on history. And I know that it's essential for me to feel good what I'm wearing no matter what. And so a lot, a good, a good amount of my clothes are baggy, baggy yet still, you know, flattering because I still do like to show my shoulders and stuff like that. Um, you know, I like to wear my jackets off the shoulders. So it's like, I, you know, I can have like a little bulky, you know, clothing, um, to, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, sometimes a little bit hide the fact that maybe I don't like what's going on down here. Um, but I can, but I can still, I can still look good. I can still look and feel good. I can feel good about the way I look and what I'm wearing without, without going down, without going down the road of beating myself up for how I look or for the fact that I've gained a few pounds or whatever like we all fucking do uh, uh, like 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 our weight does it fluctuates for everybody you know so um so yeah definitely insecurities play a part you know in choosing your personal style but you can use them as tools to to work around you know and i don't know kind of like beat those kind of beat those insecurities too um, we're coming up on half an hour, and so I'll take one more good question. One more good question from from the live stream audience, and uh, and then and then I will I will close out because I got stuff to do. <laughs> uh, weight is not meant to stay stagnant, and you look fabulous. Thank you, my dear. Um, yeah, that is very important to that is very important to remember, and. Um, yeah, definitely something, you know, as someone who struggles with body image, I got to rem- something to remind myself all the time. What is your favorite color in clothing? 
Hmm. I... Hmm. That's a complicated question. I have... Hmm. I have quite a bit of black in my wardrobe because part of my style is like sometimes I will wear like pretty dark and like neutral clothing and then like my makeup will look up, for, will make up for it. Um, um, I don't know what my favorite, my absolute favorite is. Um... I think that my color is red. I that it's my favorite color period. It always has been since I was a little girl, little goyle. And um I know I look good in it. Um everybody has a color that they look the best in. So I guess my favorite would be it, it would be red because I know that's one of the colors that I look the best in. And it would be it would behoove you to like figure out what those colors are. Um so you can have abundance of them in your wardrobe, honestly, and on a day that you can't really think about, think too hard about what to wear, um, you can have those go-tos with those go-to colors, you know. Um, and um, and also, I'm very much a, a fan of a red lip. I believe that a red lip can fix almost anything. Um, <laughs> on days that I have no idea what to do with myself, um, red lip is the way to go and then I kind of just build from there um but anyway so yeah that's my favorite color for my style um but anyway that's all for today's episode of Nick Talks for everybody in the chat thank you so much for joining me this is how I plan on doing the Nick Talk podcast from here on out if I'm able, unless I'm not able, is to be able to interact with the audience like this and just riff as I do. But this has been an episode on fashion um, and how important it is to figuring out your self-image and, your, um, and just boosting your self-esteem. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Um, Remember to follow me on my social media and I will see you at the next episode. Thank you for, so much for watching and or listening. Goodbye.